Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp here with Eric Spillaboy. How are you, sir? I am good. Trying to uh, stay warm because it's been cold and uh, we've had an inordinate amount of snow. I know uh, I was letting the dog out the other day and there was a bird in the far part of the yard and she decided to be, you know, to put her beady little eyes on the bird and wasn't paying attention. It jumped and landed right into the uh, snow drift in front of uh, where between her and the bird and just sort of sat there and looked at me like, all right, what do I do now? Which nice. was funny as heck. So, but she eventually backed herself up and out of it. And by then the bird was long gone. So, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's fun. You know, when you're, you're a small dog, uh, eight, nine inches of snow, uh, it, it'll, it'll cover you pretty quickly. So. Always entertaining. Yes. So, well, that's, that sounds like fun. I've, I've had, um, I've actually, enjoyed it to some degree because I've actually gotten to use my snow blower. Um, oh yeah. So, yeah. Five years ago, I went on a Craigslist binge and I bought all this stuff on Craigslist. And one of the things I got was a, a snow blower for $200 from some guy. Um, and I think I used it five times in four years just because we've had such a ridiculously, you know, short, you know, I mean, short on snow for us. So this year, I think I've used it probably seven or eight times so far, just like three times in the last couple of days, which, um, you know, I'm looking out my window and I'm kind of happy. <laughs> yeah, no, it, uh, it, it, yeah, cause it's nice. I know, you know, my driveway it would, uh, by, by shovel, we had that one event earlier, uh, this year where it was like the snow was kind of icy and packed down and I couldn't use the snow blower and it took me about an hour and a half to shovel the driveway in. But this, the stuff we're getting now is the nice powdery light stuff. And about 16 minutes, 12 to 16 minutes, I can have the whole driveway and sidewalk all snow blown and uh, everything is good to go. So my back is appreciating it. Let me just tell you that. So. Absolutely. Uh, it was the roughest part. And so, yeah, I was glad to just, you know, I, I went out actually on lunch today. So my face might be a little bit red because I was uh, just taking it out there and it was like, you know, I got a postage stamp for a yard. So I, hey, I. <laughs> 10 minutes I'm in and out and back in I smell like gas but otherwise I'm fine yeah I know the two cycle mo yeah the two cycle engines there's no way to get around that unfortunately so yeah that's the clone of the day so um what can uh what are you gonna I know you had a couple items to, to share why don't you go ahead do have a couple of items as uh we've noted on a couple of videos of course uh our friends in China have been on a buying spree when it's come to U.S. grown crops uh, they have bought an inordinate amount of corn and soybeans, uh, which have jacked up the prices, of course. And now today, I, I read a report that, lo and behold, besides those two crops, they also now apparently have an appetite for U.S. grown wheat. Uh, China this week has ordered 2.6 million metric tons of wheat to be delivered uh, by, I guess, the end of February or beginning of March. Uh, which is significant because now China ranks as the third largest importer of U.S. wheat behind only Mexico and the Philippines. So again, uh, and a significant, significant uh, uptick in the uh, amount of wheat they're importing versus one year ago. So again, China and U.S. crops, uh, you know, there's a nice little symbiotic relationship going on right now, and hopefully it'll continue throughout 2021. That's great. Shame on me for not knowing the Philippines had a hankering for U.S. wheat. That's great. Apparently they do. Yeah. So I'm not sure what they use it for. But uh, then again, that I'm sure wheat's pretty versatile. So you can do a lot of things with it. So Absolutely. but sort of tied to this, Paul, sort of as a, as a companion piece, if you will, given the fact that we've now seen commodity prices, corn and soybean rising so quickly, uh, because due in part to the Chinese appetite for those crops. Uh, the USDA looks like you're going to be maybe altering their projections for the planting acreage for 2021. Uh, you may remember, Paul, originally when the report came out uh, earlier this year, they were projecting about a dead even split between corn and soybean, both about 90 million acres. Uh, but now they're saying because of the uptick in corn prices that they're expecting corn acreage to go up about two to three million acres to about 93 million acres planted here in 2021. And uh, they expect soybean to drop back about a million acres to 89 million acres. So, and again, where uh, 
where the ester acreage is coming from, perhaps maybe wheat, maybe cotton, maybe rice, not sure, but uh, those are the revised numbers. So it looks like the, uh, you know, the, uh, the split between corn and soybean, which was almost dead even, uh, now will be a little more pronounced as we go into the spring season. Interesting, interesting. Um, you know, corn always finds a way to come back, doesn't it? <laughs> it you know, it, it seems like the market just waits for some reason. Uh, but yes, uh, U.S. growers love their corn. So uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to one thing I wanted to share is looking through actually some of the you know some of the stories on crop life that just popped up this week um, on on the website. And Jackie Pucci did a great job with um, a story called "Timing Is Everything Hitting the Mark on Fungicide Applications in 2021." Um, so a lot of talk over the winter was just, it, it surprised me just in conversations about other stories, how difficult it's been to get a, 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 an established business through the uh, fungicide, you know, through selling fungicides to growers. And it's just constantly something the growers either cut at the end of the season um, or, you know, just decide not to, not to put in. And, and the share of market is still pretty, the available share of market is still pretty high for most retailers. I, um, just, you know, that's a great story to take a look at. It has a lot of statistics about what's working um, and most effective in terms of agronomic practices and, and, and paybacks and so forth. So, you know, take a look at that and see if that can help a little bit and, you know, kind of bring that log jam of, uh, of doubt and, uh, and frustration with, uh, with, with fungicides that we seem to hit every summer. Yeah, well, Paul, and again, as we said earlier, I mean, with uh, commodity prices on the rise, perhaps 2021 will be a uh, more positive year for the fungicide uh, sellers out there, and the market shares will actually improve a little bit because growers may have a little extra money in their pockets to uh, to spend to try to keep their yields higher. So, Yep, absolutely. So you got the last bit of news you want to start? Well, yeah, actually a little bit of somber news. Uh, we found out uh, about uh, by the time this video airs uh, over the past weekend that a longtime advocate and friend of ours in the industry, Ford B. West, who was uh, head of the Fertilizer Institute for many, many years, uh, has passed away at the age of 73. So we were very sad to hear that news, of course, and uh, we've been collecting some uh, comments from folks in the industry. And I know you did a column that will appear in the March edition of Crop Life. And I did a column that was in our e-newsletter this past week. Uh, both of us were uh, remembering our time with Ford. Yeah, he was a really good guy. Always, uh, always enjoyed seeing him wherever it happened to be in Washington, DC most of the time, but also on the road at various trade shows. And uh, I certainly am, uh, you know, I know he had retired several years ago, but he was also, uh, he also attended many a trade show in the interim. So uh, I still saw him on a regular basis and uh, sorry in 2020, no travel. I didn't get to see him one last time. So uh, yeah, Ford, I'm going to miss you. Certainly are. Um, he's a great resource. You know, it's, it, he's one of those guys that he, he knew as a journalist that he knew way more than he could ever tell you. And he always did a great job of couching you know, what he could tell you and giving you the explanation that you needed, but certainly not as much as you wanted because he just knew everyone. He knew what was going on. He knew the appropriate things to, to say um, and, and always the smile on his face, always pleasant. I mean, he was going through cancer. He worked through um, just, just some terrible health issues and never saw him without a smile uh, on his face and greeting people. And and, and doing what he did, it was, it was remarkable. And there's, everybody has people like that in their lives where they see the strength of someone um, physically uh, the, and mentally, the ability to overcome odds and to overcome difficulties and, um, and prevail. And you, know, you make, your, make your own personal problems seem so small. Um, and and that, that endurance is inspiring. And he was one of those guys that just, um, that really was inspiring. And by, by just living out day to day living every day for, for everything he could, he could squeeze out of it. Um, really a terrific guy. Yeah, and I know both you and your column and my both basically said the same thing. Godspeed, Mr. West, we will miss you. Absolutely. So uh, anything else, sir? I think we're wrapped up. That is all we have. That is all the news that fits. So thanks for uh, joining us for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, Contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. 
try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.